Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. So today's, um, it's a Labor Day weekend. So three day weekend and there are often sales around. So my local thrift store actually has a three day sale till Monday. Today's Saturday, in case you're wondering. And 50% off everything in store. So I went there to see what they had. And I hit up the electronics section, like usual, and they had this beauty. And this was, uh, three bucks and then 50% off. So I got this for a dollar 50. So I don't really need a clock, but I'm fascinated by old mechanisms and whatnot. And this, it looks like a digital clock. It's actually electromechanical. So I'm just going to turn this on. It does turn on, um, but it's not actually keeping time. So we're going to actually have to fix this. Uh, but <laughs> just turn it on. You can see exactly how it works. There's like, um, some kind of transparent material, like a transparency, and as it rotates, um, it lights light through in certain areas and blocks it in others, and there are little, like, squares um, in the center to block light. So I'm actually interested in how this looks on the inside. But you can see, I'm going to have to fix that as well. The alarm likes to go off. But as you can see, it rolls over. So this is actually pretty interesting. There's actually, you can just about see an incandescent, um, like a light bleed from the inside. It uses an incandescent bulb um, and the plastic is tinted red. So I should actually be able to um, open this up and put LEDs inside to kind of modernize it, but keep the mechanism the same. But first off, we're actually gonna have to open this and fix it because if I leave it on 406, it'll always be on 406. I can hear, if I put my ear on top, I can hear kind of a humming sound um, because a lot of these old clocks that were electromechanical were driven via like a synchronous motor that is uh, directly powered off of mains. And because they regulate uh, mains uh, frequency to a very specific value, that's how it keeps time. Um, so what I'm expecting is something mechanical in nature, um, probably the magnetic rotor or something like that. Um, so, there is actually something rattling around inside, like a very small part. Might have something to do with it. Um, this is a West Clocks. Uh, let's see. I didn't see a date code on here. Um, it might be encoded in these numbers or something like that. I'm sure you could look it up online. It's model 22544. Um, yeah, made in the USA. Uh, 5 watts uh, right there. 60 hertz, 115 there's two uh, flathead um, screws on the bottom. I suppose we should take those off. And it looks like there might be some screws underneath or something. So um, let me grab a screwdriver and let's see if we can pop this guy open. Okay, so this was the only screwdriver I could find within arm's reach that will fit. So let's just take these two out. It's pretty hollow inside, it feels like, um, so there's really not much in here. This just pops right off. This is quite dusty. Um, hmm. No screws. <laughs> Guessing, yeah, you gotta get in here with a flathead, and maybe this will pop out. Yeah, it looks like they're clips. Hopefully I can do this without destroying the plastic. Yeah, it looks like it's popping out. There we go. I have to give this all nice, good, clean. You can already see a little gear in there. Here's the uh, synchronous motor. There's some uh, wire nuts. Okay. Just take off this. Pull this free a bit, and how is this held in exactly? Looks like there's like a screw from the front. I can kind of feel this piece is loose, but there's no obvious way I can pry it without damaging the front. Um, might have to poke it out. Yeah, I can see that little bit of red right about here 
Um, there are holes, and this is basically like a transparent, flexible sheet. Uh, I should be able to kind of push it out. Maybe I can catch it with my fingernail. Just very carefully start bending it out. Really don't want to damage this, though. This wasn't... It looks like it wasn't really made to... Ah, this just popped out. I don't know if that's plastic or if this is magnetic. No, it's not magnetic. I was thinking that was part of the uh, magnetic rotor. That would explain why it's not spinning. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to work on getting this guy out. we got to get the mechanism out. There are two screws, but they're pointing inwards from the front, and we can't get that off until we get this red plastic sheet off. So give me a second. Okay, so it was a little nerve-wracking. I got a blunt pocket knife in between these two, and I carefully bent the silver plastic out just enough to pop the tabs out. Now I can get these off. Um, but it looks like this knob is in the way, so I can't pull it straight off right now. Oh, I really hope this isn't destructive. Okay, this just pulls out. Okay, good. It's friction fitted in, so we can stick that back in after we're done. And... Ah, here's the mechanism. Wow, that is interesting. So these are actually belts, transparency belts. And you can see, wow, that is fascinating. That's really cool. I did not, I don't know what I was expecting, but I didn't quite expect that. Um, interesting. There's this sort of mechanism or something going on here for the uh, snooze button um, to turn off the alarms. Here's the um, rotary dial for setting the alarm time, and then this is what this plastic piece went into the lever to turn on and off the alarm. You can see, interesting, there are only three screws, but there's four holes. <laughs> Don't know what's uh, quite going on with that. Doesn't look like anyone's ever been in here before, but uh, let's just take these off. And it looks like we're in like Flynn. You can see where that center square is is actually printed. The back side of this translucent, uh, red translucent plastic is uh, screen printed. It looks something like that with a black, darker, opaque uh, material there. You can see exactly kind of the outline that it, um, it leaves like a mask. That's fascinating. Okay, anyway. Can take off the shell finally and I'm um, gonna give this all a really good clean here's the mechanism that's so cool you know I'm actually tempted to uh, replace this with a piece of just perfectly clear acrylic so that you could see the entire mechanism and just maybe put like a square outline of uh, black tape or something around just the the actual time but yeah you can see it's like a film reel there's actually little divots I'm guessing like a spoke goes through that for the advancement mechanism. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. Wow. I, I don't know what I expected, but not quite that. Um, looks like the bulbs, there's like a clear piece of some kind of plastic in there. There's probably bulbs. Um, ah, there's, yeah, there's actually a... Um, I don't want to go too far into this and ruin the entire mechanism. But there's um, little reflector pieces, it looks like almost. Well, diffuser pieces, I guess, um, that go behind each of the digits. And there's probably light bulbs in there. Uh, it's hard to see, but yeah. There's this piece here. That's interesting. Hmm, that's interesting. So, okay, so the, there's little keyed uh, mechanisms that when they when it rolls over from uh, 9 to 0, it'll push the next digit over uh, and increment that by 1. That's interesting. Can't really easily see. Um, there's a network of gears in there as well. 
some of them metal tooth, some of them plastic, um, that are driving basically the gear ratio to keep track of time uh, correctly. And interestingly enough, yeah, there's this little guy here, uh, which I'm guessing is seconds, yeah. And that would explain why um, I wasn't seeing this advance, um, because this actually wasn't counting. I'm going to guess that um, something might have seized in here. So give me a second. I'm going to see... Maybe if I can, yeah, we can take off, there's some flathead screws, we can take off this and um, take off the motor itself and I think I need to get a smaller screwdriver. We can take off this entire motor assembly and inspect all the gears and make sure it's uh, freely spinning. It might actually be seized up, the bearing for that, which would prevent everything from spinning, obviously. Let me get a smaller flathead screwdriver. This one's too large for that. Ah, uh, okay. We're actually going to need to bend these metal tabs. Um, they're keyed in on the front onto these um, cross braces. And um, so, yeah, we need to unfortunately bend some metal now. That's kind of a pain. Okay, so make sure I don't lose everything. It's all going to kind of pop out. Ugh. Oh, God. Oh, dear sweet Lord, everything's popping out. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I wanted. Just everything to spring out there. This is going to be fun putting back together. Oh, jeez. Wow, this was really not designed to be serviced at all. Ah, oh, jeez, I'm getting oil all over my fingers. Give me a second, I'm going to figure this out a bit. Okay, so I finally got this mess back together again. Uh, basically, uh, this gear train here um, is connected to kind of this one wheel. Now, the seconds, as they advance, um, if you see, let me see, how did I? Yeah, you can see there's like a little finger that once uh, the seconds wheel reaches, uh, zero, it'll advance uh, the minutes uh, one's place by one. And um, basically this motor um, interfaces between these two sets. And um, that's generally how that works. Um, now, the problem with this is, um, so there are two coils here. So the buzzer sound that it makes for the alarm is actually this finger here. And it's a um, piece of some kind of steel. And um, there's this outer coil um, wrapped in brown here. And that magnetizes um, this kind of metal bar so that uh, when it's active, this will actually oscillate. And um, that's generally how that um, makes the sound. There's actually an inner coil, a secondary one. That's these two wires here. And that's what drives the gear train. Um, and when we measure that using a multimeter, uh, we should see a low impedance. However, it's open, so that coil actually burnt out, um, which would explain why there's um, no movement when we plug this in. So unfortunately, the motor on this is cactus, and um, to replace it, I would need to either rewind it or find a replacement. So that's kind of... A bummer. So what I actually think I'm going to end up doing is um, this mounting plate is still good. All the um, the electronics and or all the mechanics of this side are still 
usable. So I'm going to take off the motor from this mounting plate, remount this back on, and um, see if I can buy a stepper motor. And um, I can drive it with like an Arduino with a real-time clock, whatever I need. Actually, I wouldn't even really need a real-time clock. Just uh, basically count with the oscillator and um, rotate this, you know, six at um, you know one sixtieth a second or whatever, um, sixty hertz basically. Um, actually, there's a gear train on this, so it'd be probably much less. But I can figure out exactly how to drive it such that this advances, you know, once per minute, sort of, or well. This wheel would have to advance once per second for that to work. Uh, but unfortunately, the original motor is cactus. It's not going to work. So, um, yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. But this is a very old item, so, you know, unsurprisingly, stuff breaks over time. But um, we should be able to salvage the rest of this mechanism and uh, maybe hook up, like, a small... Wouldn't even need to be an Arduino. I could do this with a 555 timer. Uh, we can hook this back up and at least get this working um, using a modern motor, pretty much, um, because this one unfortunately has uh, seen a lot of uh, a lot of things in its day, and it just couldn't go on, unfortunately. Anyway, um, yeah, sorry. Unfortunately, I won't be able to fix this in this video. This will be a ongoing future project. But yeah, it was fascinating seeing exactly how everything works. These two wires here are for the um, the bulbs inside, for the incandescent bulbs. So I could easily, if I can get into the mechanism without destroying absolutely everything. Unfortunately, it looks like some, some of the uh, plates are heat staked together. So I'll have to break those and find a way of like re-gluing them carefully. Uh, but I can actually go inside and uh, change these. Um, actually make put LEDs inside um, to get this up and running again. Anyway, sorry, I knew it was basically the end of the video, but I uh, just put this all back together and um, this all works again, the entire mechanism. So I'll be able to reuse that. Took apart the motor because it's dead anyway. So I figured whatevs. So this is actually interesting. The gearbox, which is, uh, is sealed, I mean, it's basically bent over, so it'd be very difficult. I, in order to get this open, I'd have to destroy it. Um, this is fully self-contained, basically. And um, I'm guessing there's like a magnet inside. And when it's coupled over like a disc in the very back, um, and it's coupled over um, via these little metal fingers, and it indirectly kind of drives the, the gear system... So that's actually interesting. So hopefully you guys were interested in seeing exactly uh, how this mechanism worked. And, and, you know, with any luck, you guys will be seeing this in a uh, near future video.